Hi everybody, I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat. A day of rest. Anyone else going? Yeah, uh, it's a uh, day that we should be spending with y'all. A day that you should be in the Word. A day that you should be sitting with your family and going over what the Word of Yahuwah wants and what the Torah really is and what it, what it is about. That is a guidebook for us. That is life for us. That is blessings. That it is holy. That it is something that Yah has deemed that it was worthy. That it should never be changed because He said it was perfect in His eyes. What He created was perfect. And if it's something perfect, we should absolutely be doing it. And one of those things that was perfect was the Shabbat. All right, so are you saying that we shouldn't get in our car on Sunday and turn the car on and drive to a church and have church at 10 o'clock and Sunday school at 10 o'clock, then go to church at 11, and then go out to eat afterwards and pay our people and then head home and watch NFL on TV as we kick back and uh, eat Cheetos? No. Absolutely not. You should be you should be in your house resting. I think uh, they had synagogues close by where they would go all read the Torah synagogues for those that couldn't read back in the day, but now... Most people can read, so you should be within your house being the preacher. As the, as if you're the head of the house, you should be preaching to your family, reading out of the Torah, explaining what you have read to your family so they can understand what also is in the Torah. All right, so what if they're not the head of the family? Uh, and the head of the family doesn't care. The head of the family is watching NFL. Well, they should try to teach their family. That's why our first, well, first, first you got to read your Torah. You got to read your something. You can go explain it to them. You got to try your best to explain it to these people out of love. You can't push them away from it because if you push them away, they're always just going to hate anything that comes out of the Bible. You have to teach them with love as Yahushua taught the people as he taught them with love. All right. Well, I know there is a tremendous amount of Torah keepers out there who are, I would say, single in the Torah keepers, but they're married. But their spouses um, have want nothing to do with the laws, statutes, and commands of Yah. What advice would we have to those who are who your spouse is not? You know, he doesn't. He or she does not care about the Torah. They don't. They don't care. What is what is the answer? Uh, you uh, might, pray for them. I would say teach them as much as you can. And try your best. Once you have done everything you can, that is upon their soul, and you have done what you can. I would say you could probably live by that example. If you are a Torah-keeping spouse of somebody who is not in the Torah, your ways and your light should shine, and it should be an example of the ways that our Creator wants us to be. And so today is a very important chapter, very important. But before that, we want to go into... Um, here, I, I don't even know how to do this because we, have, uh, we just changed this up. And so these are the, the laws that we have, and we just got rid of three and four. We didn't get rid of three and four, but we didn't add the verse to that. It's oh, it's the verse. same verse, isn't it? That's yeah, why. okay. So I, we kept the thinking, I, as I was reading this, and the boys kept flubbing up on this, um, unable to represent for Team Boss. Um, we, uh, all right, let's let's represent for Team Boss. Who, Jaden? I know you haven't seen this because you're on the other side of the table for me. Uh, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fair. It's plenty fair, son. You're on the spot. Let's run it. Give me okay, give okay. me the first ten, and then we'll go over our little changes that we had. It's gonna be a little different. Just think through this. You got okay. this. Okay. Uh, is it be fruitful or bear fruit? It's be fruitful. Be fruitful. Okay. Is there a difference between be fruitful and bearing fruit? I don't really. I don't know. You always say no whenever we say bear fruit. <laughs> yeah, it's be fruitful. That's okay. what it is. Be fruitful. Multiply. Oh, he's looking over, looking for <laughs> cheating guides uh, here. This is a sub. Do it have dominion over? No. no. Team Boss just went oh. down. Oh man. Oh, we're, we're in the, all right, here. Let's go over these again. Hey, let's listen. Everybody, listen. Are you with me? All right. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over, and part of subdue it is have dominion over every fish, fowl, and every living creature. And this is where we had. Two commands here. This is when we were first putting the commandments together, and um, we didn't add. We didn't at that point. We didn't add like verses under them. We just we were trying to pick and pick and roll them. Um, the herb bearing and every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood, which is now nine. Okay. Walk before me and be perfect, which is now ten. All right. So. We have a total, I'm going to do a, a handy dandy spin to the bottom here. And we are, since we're at 51, so we have 51 commands right now. And we still, uh, there's one above here that we don't know. Um, 
it's about the firstborn or uh, sanctifying the firstborn to Yah. Does anyone remember where that was? That's where we're at. It says give 39, don't press a stranger. So I think it's further on down. Do not bow down to their Elohim. Um, I don't know. I think mom's over there doing something. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought it was in the 20 commands. Was like, it in the 20s? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We will go over these all another time. But today is a very, very important chapter. Um in the life of the Torah. And why is this an important chapter, Jade? Because this is our, our menu of what we can and cannot eat. This shows what clean animals are and tells us how to determine clean animals. That's a good idea, menu. That, uh, do we put, we don't have, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, the BLB is giving us a fit. There it is. And so, 11. yeah, and it just smoted me. I've been smoted and I think my internet's being funky out in the middle of the jungle. We have a hacked phone that's sitting on top of a giant pole just to get it. All right, so we got this. So you said it was on our menu. This right. is on our menu. Now, is it wrong if people don't want to eat what's on this menu per se? I would say, yeah, if you go to a restaurant or something that's not on the menu, they're probably not going to give it to you. Okay, here's what I mean. Is, is it bad to be vegan? No. No. I mean, there's no Torah against being vegan. So it never says you have to eat meat. Is there any, is it wrong to eat meat? No, and it depends on the meat. If you're eating pork, or if you're gonna, we're, well, we're about to find out all these unclean animals here. All right. It depends if uh, you can eat clean meat, but if you eat un uh, unclean meat, it's uh, an abomination. It's an abomination. Why, Eli? Come up here real quick to the microphone and kind of pay attention, if you will. Um, if you will, I appreciate that, I Eli. Was. Thank you, thank you, Eli. I love putting these guys on the spot. I love rolling them under the bus. All right. Tell me why. Um, Tell me why it is important that we understand this list. Well, one, Yahoo, this is what Yahoo tells you, and because the unclean food is just bad for us, it's very unhealthy. Right, and so, yeah, let's, let's, let's get into this. Let's, let's have some fun. Here we go. All right, so Leviticus 11. Uh, Eli, Eli sh shocked to go into the bus. All right, it's okay. Leviticus 11. And Yahoo, oh, first of all, before I, we do that, we want to say uh, greets to everybody out there, every, everyone in the digital family. Um, you know, I, I, sometimes I forget this, but you guys are the reasons besides y'all that we are here. Um, we truly appreciate you guys out there. We appreciate um, the time you guys spend in this, and we, we love all of you guys. And so thank you much to everybody out there who's, who's seeking the will of Yah. And hopefully one day we will all uh, high-five and give you guys big old grizzly bear hugs. And, uh, you know, the, the end of the age is on its way. And so this is the best time of ever to seek the, 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 um, the hand of our creator. Uh, give me two words. Give me two words each for the Torah. As we go around, give me something. Who's Perfect first? instructions. Okay, got it. Good, holy. Okay. Um, wonderful, perfect. You said perfect. What do you got, Nicole? Uh, Nicole, she didn't let me be on the spot. She's taking the bus ride. Come on, come on over here. What do you got for the Torah? Give me two words. I got one. Blessings. Blessings. I think you gave me that the other day. I did. Um, I would say wondrous, wonderful. wondrous, and yasum. Oh. Not just awesome. Yasum. Y a h a yasum. What do you got, Jade? A uh, guide. It's a guide. Yeah, not only is it a guide, but it is, it is our path forward. And without this, um, we would be in bad shape. Kind of like would, the map to life. It is the map to life. Yes, it is very much the map to life. And if we don't have that, um, we, we have the map to death, right? right. If, if we don't have the map to life, then we're going down the, the road of death. And um, the, the holiness that we get from the Torah is, is quite amazing because it is a... It is perfection, right? There's no dirtiness to it. There's no filthiness to it. It is, in fact, it is, is actually clinger than what we could ever be. You know, if, if uh, you know, qualification that y'all wants to dwell with us is that we have a perfectly clean house, we are in deep trouble, at, l at least in boss clan, but we're working it. So, um, yeah, our creator is clean, holy, righteous, loving, merciful, slow to, slow to wrath. And, um, you know, he has, he has sanctified us. If you guys are listening to this today, it means that our creator has built you for a time such as this and that we are we are supposed to know this stuff. And as the end of the age is coming up on us, those who do not know the Torah are in very, very bad shape. And so let's begin. Leviticus 11. And Yahuwah spoke spoken to El Moshe and to El Eron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parts the hoof and is cloven-footed, and choose the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. 
All right, so here, right out of the gate, we have this. We it has to part the hoof. Has to have a split hoof and it was a semi. Yeah, split hoof, cloven footed. What did you guys say? Yeah, mine doesn't say anything about cloven footed. It just says the, the king split, does. The split hoof completely divided. Okay, cloven hooded. That would be what a clove is. It looks like I think at the bottom of a cow's foot, right? Yeah, I guess it's kind of like a hoof. I mean, everyone knows what a hoof is, right? R right. And so you, we have, we have the right out of the gate. If we don't know anything else, we need to know that it, it has to have it cloven footed, um, or divided hoof. Okay, divided hoof might be the better thing, right? So we know what a cow's foot looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody. So what does it look like? It's just basically a, almost like a circle with a giant like V shape in the middle of it. And they have their fingernails at the bottom, right? Right, like two little like fingers kind of thing. Yeah, they have like two fingers on the bottom of their stuff. All right, they, fingers actually don't do much. They just walk. Yeah. All right. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he chews the cud but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Now, why do you guys suppose a camel is unclean? The cat cow's good. Uh, I'm sure there's something inside of a camel that's not healthy. He probably doesn't process food the same way, or his but meat. But he chews the cud. Chews the cud, but doesn't have a split hoof. Like y'all specifically it's... designed his his like intel his amazing intelligence is like these people are gonna need signs of what is clean and what's not. So I'll give them a uh, one that chews the cud and a split hoof, and then the people see like, all right, that's a clean animal. And they see it's like it's not a clean animal. It's just a intelligent way that y'all shows us what is clean and what is unclean. Like he already had this ready from day one. Yeah, I find this part amazing, right? Because he says, first of all, he says anything that has cloven foot and chews the cud, then he's like, listen, there's things inside of this that do this. Um, but he, so the, the, so it divides not the hoof. He is unclean to you. So he it, must have, instead of it being split in the middle. all around like a horse. Yeah, like a horse's foot. Okay. And the coney... Uh, because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. The so, rabbit. He says rabbit? Yeah. This one up here <laughs> says hyrax. Mine says coney or rock badger. Rock badger. Okay, so a lot of people eat rabbit. Um, yours guys say rabbit? Yeah. Okay, so yours actually says rabbit. So the hyrax is the rabbit, and the coney is the rabbit. So why wouldn't we eat the rabbit? Um, because it's not a cling, I guess. Lots of people eat rabbits. Lots of them. I don't think I've ever had rabbit. It tastes like chicken. I, I had it when I was... Uh, back in the days, I was at Uncle Bob's place, and they went out, and we went to those people's houses, and they were eating a rabbit. And uh, I wasn't too impressed with it, but there were jackrabbits all the time. You guys know what jackrabbits mm -hmm. are? Yeah, I see yeah, yeah. They're like long-eared... Uh, they just they, mm -hmm. they hop everywhere. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, and I raised rabbits, and they are... I don't know exactly why you wouldn't eat eat them um they are kind of nasty little animals but it's, if you cling the cage then they're really not too nasty animals but that was my problem <laughs> they eat their own though don't they they eat their own no that was only bunky my rabbit i had a, a rabbit named bunky who was really mean and it was super mean and uh that was the only rabbit i knew that ate its own okay. and, and it, it like it couldn't handle having a kid and it, it like ate the baby <laughs> which is crazy weird i knew bunky was crazy okay um <laughs> And the hair, well, hold on here. The, this one this one talks about something different. Okay, the hair is something different. The rabbit is the hair. So let's go I back. I thought rabbit and hair were two different things. Okay, are you in five when you say rabbit? Yeah. It says it says yeah. the high rack. Six and, say and the rabbit. Six says hair. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, but, okay, so anything. It's a rabbit or a hair or anything, that the floppy-eared things that people um, keep around for Easter. Um all right, so here it is, and the hair, because he chews not to cut. Eli, do you have something to add to this? No, uh, I asked her to look up if it, what a cone is. Oh, okay. All right, thanks, Eli. All right, and the hair, because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. So no rabbits at all. All right, now let's get into the big thing. And the swine, though he divides the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he chews not the cud, he is unclean to you. Now, we've gone over this ad nauseum, I think, for I don't know how many times. It's it, got to be getting old, right? We've said it, it a lot. It, we've said it a lot, but, you know, it's the this is the default food of Christians that will probably end up sending them all to hell. They can't stop eating the pig. And when you tell them to stop eating the pig, it makes them very offended. They get really crazy. They get angry. Yeah, and they're like, oh, Messiah Jesus, he, he's, he made all food cling. And then you go and show them that had to do with washing of the hands and had nothing to do about it's, eating unclean foods. And they are like, well, well, you have Peter's dream. Peter's dream is... is you got to read the whole chapter to understand yeah. that it wasn't that. It was going to the Gentiles. Only, yeah, was, only had, Israel knew the truth. Yes, and absolutely. And being a Jew, being Jews and things of that nature, 
um, yeah, they that, did not believe that they could uh, preach to to Gentiles, people outside of it, and so that was the entire dream. The dream had nothing to do with eating unclean food, which is why Peter goes, uh, I, "I've never eaten anything unclean. I don't know what I'm, I'm even seen." So he had to see the dream three times. And he's like, "I'm not going to eat the unclean still didn't food." Get yeah, no, and yeah, like once you stop eating swine and nasty food like there's no way we could ever go back to swine i would never ever eat a swine unless evil eric tricked us and we you know we don't deal with him anymore but um it, it's okay so there's no swine whatsoever no pig don't eat the pig of their flesh shall ye not eat and their carcass shall ye not touch they are unclean to you so if oh, you right. kill a pig, you should, or if you have see a dead pig, you should not be touching Don't the dead touch pig. The pig. There's some serious disease with pigs. There's something wrong. Yeah, there's there's hundreds of different bacteria that live in swine, and people literally fry this up, and they they it's like the the candy of the sinner. It's really sick. All right, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, Wh whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. All right, so um, salmon, I think, are good. They have scales. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tuna, I think, is good. Yeah, so this is identifying this. So it has to have fins and scales. Um, and that, that's a big thing. So would uh, lobster. No, he has claws, no scales. No claws. Okay, there's um, there's a whole bunch of, I don't know what kind of fish they are. There's like dirty fish. Um, they Shrimp? Well, that's... that's, that's pretty pretty clams good. are pretty bad. Clams are pretty bad. I don't think they're bad. fish, though, are they? Uh, what? Clams aren't fish? Um, well, they live in the I think, sea. I don't think you eat the whale or the shark. You don't eat either one of them. No, because it does not have it's, scales. Yeah, they have don't scales. have scales. Dolphins, have fins. Dolphins have, don't have scales. Right. So you wouldn't eat those. Um, what else? Whales. I don't think you would turtles. eat a whale. I don't think turtles. Turtles? Yeah. No, those are not a fish. That's like no, a reptile. That's a turtle. No, it's <laughs> sea turtles. <laughs> it is sea turtle. All right. So that's what we eat and what we don't eat there. Okay. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you. Okay, so that's very interesting. What do you think separates that? We 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 fish here, right? Mm -hmm. What what is the difference? And you, the thing is, you guys never cling to fish. That's a difference. Yeah, okay. Is it's a little bit different. So I know you guys have, have chopped up cows and things of that nature. So um, I would say it's the way the intestines like clean itself. On the way, what it is, is it? What is the difference when you guys are eating meat versus fish? What is the what is the qualities of a fish? Fish is kind of like a thin, slender meat. It kind of just like falls apart. It's white. When it's cooked. it's yeah. also really white, and it doesn't have. Like all of this, the steam, you know, it's definitely not red meat by any means. So, but it's, it's crazy that our creator loves us so much that he was able to, he just spent an entire chapter right here. It says, this will kill you. This won't. But yet people will go, people are okay getting killed. Bubbles. Bubs, hey. Stop. Okay. I wonder so if the Yashalites were like, oh no, we can't eat our bacon now. Uh, no, because they would have never, ever eaten bacon, right? But probably everyone around them at that point was probably eating the pigs. I'm sure the Gentiles, I'm sure all the nations. All the, all the people pigs. that came out were still had some uh, some nasty foods with them. Yeah, and definitely out of Babylon, they, they ate the pigs and things of that nature. And, you know, uh, Messiah Yahushua, it's interesting, Messiah Yahushua sent the demons into the pigs. We're always uh, unbinding demons and things in our house, and we're sending them into our, our, our neighbor's pigs they have like a huge pig farm over there so hopefully the pigs don't go and uh mess people up but we're dealing with a little dog abomination here so we're we're, we're trying not to uh break this okay they shall be an abomination unto you ye shall not eat of their flesh but ye shall have their carcass ye, ye shall have their carcass in abomination that's even that's even, so it even says it's an abomination what is an abomination uh, like I think like I think yeah, who hates it's, abominations. If you it, well, what is it? if you if something is abominable to you? Like if you guys, it's something you absolutely like hate with all your detest, being. It's right? Like, you despise, despise, right? And so, if, if this is where he's not even talking about. Um, but you shall have the car. You shall have their carcass is an abomination. So I mean, it's not that he just doesn't want you to touch him. He hates. That you would touch the dead flesh of of, uh, of one of these animals. And I would assume they would all come with like some serious diseases when they're dead because uh, clean animals have ways to get rid of all these things. They have like certain different stomachs, certain different uh, intestines, and if they they die and all that stuff's gonna come out of them because there's no like the parasite inside of them has no place to live, so they're all gonna come outside of it. If you touch that, you're probably gonna get sick, or if you eat it, you're definitely gonna get some of the parasites inside of that beast. 
Yeah, and as far as I know, I believe cows have four stomachs, as far as I know. I, I don't even know that. You've chopped them up. It looks like one stomach to me, but we didn't. Yeah. I Maybe there's something that's I don't know. I, I've I, never dealt, like, I've never, like, examined all the organs, like, like open up, like, how the four stomachs. It looks like just a normal And thing. when they chew the cut, I guess they just, like, I, I, I no, they, they, yeah, they th- two stomachs, not four. They throw up. So Nicole says they have two stomachs, not four. We've cut them up. They look like they have one stomach, but we've yeah. never cut through the stomach. So I they don't might know. have a little like sack inside of the stomach. Really. Yeah, something. However, they eat is totally different. So we, if you're able to take grass and eat the grass, um, and I guess it'd be also something. What do you eat, right? Because the cows, they're not going to eat a chunk of meat, right? They're not going to eat bugs. They're not going to eat anything. They not will eat, eat grass, yeah. and they'll eat grain, and then they will whatever throw it up in their mouth and then rechew it. Um, like a pig, pig will eat anything, right? A pig will eat a rotten uh, corpse of a mouse. It will eat and it won't care. A pig will also eat a human body, right? If you toss a, a dead body in there or something of the sort, the pig will consume that, um, as well as the pig will eat their young. Um, so if something dies, I mean, it's just, it's all um, stuff. Nicole is showing me something here. So they do have four parts okay. to their stomach. Yep, so this is cow hour. Parts of the cow's stomach is the rumen. This is the first part of the cow's stomach. It helps break down complex plant products like grass. Uh, reticulmen. Uh, here the food mixes with the cow's saliva and produces cud. Cows burp up the cud into their mouths and chew it to help break it up down more. When you see a cow that looks like he is chomping on bubble gum, really she is chewing her cud. And then there's omas- omasum. Here all the water is absorbed out of the food and... Abomasum. Here's where the food is finally digested, similar to what happens in this human stomach. Huh. So yeah, we uh, thank you, Nicole. Appreciate that. Um, I guess that yeah, cows are completely different. And still, I got to go back to. I find this incredibly amazing that our creator gave us this. We we would have no clue. We'd be completely clueless. We would not know. Um, and if you want to trust the science, we might as well all end up dead anyway. All right, here we are. Thirteen. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the offerage and the osprey. Okay, what do you guys have? On okay, this? it says the first one is the eagle and the vulture and the black vulture. Yeah, those things are nasty. Those, those vultures are sky pigs. Those suckers will come down they and eat anything. they'll eat anything. They completely, and you notice the vultures have no hair on the back of their head, right? Mm. They have, unlike, you know, uh, chickens and things of that nature, they have combs and all this stuff over there. The vultures have bald heads, and we've gone over this before, right? Why do they have bald heads? It's so all the uh, carcass and blood doesn't get stuck yeah, in Yeah, they air. can stick their face right up in the thing and rip just, the guts out and it doesn't get blood all over their heads. I mean, because they, they would be picking off each other, right? They kind of built a little bit of a cleanup crew. They are. Guts. This is the cleanup crew. This is absolutely. Y'all put a cleanup crew. Something dies. It disappears out here and everything is fed. But we're not to eat this stuff. And, um, you know, at one point when we ran out of dog food, we literally had no dog food. We were hunting birds. And um, it is, it's pretty grotesque, but I mean, we were hunting little birds, which are uncling to us um, and makes us uncling as we touch them. But we could never, st- we, we were going to go after the vulture because it had a ton of meat on it, but we could never do it because it was so gross. It was so nasty. It would have been an easy shot and uh, it was just clinging that thing up would have been really disgusting. So we stuck to the uh, cute little birds and fed the dogs. So that's where we are. Maybe too much info. All right. 14. And the vulture and the kite after his kind. What do you guys have? The vulture. Okay, this is verse 14, right? Yeah. And, and the, the hawk, hawk and, and the falcon. Okay, hawk and the falcon. We know what those words are. So um, so, so this one says vultures. The other one say vulture? These things yeah. are all. Yeah, 13 says vulture and black vulture. Then 14 says hawk and the falcon. Okay, yeah. There's di- There's got to be different kinds of vultures. And these things are huge. All right. And the vulture and the kite after his kind. Um, and every raven after his kind, we do not eat. And the owl and the night hawk and the cuck owl and the hawk after his kind. Okay, okay, let me read that. And the ostrich and the night hawk and the seagull and the hawk after its kind. Okay, why wouldn't we not eat an owl or hawks and things like this? I don't know. Uh, they don't have the same, like with chickens, they have two different stomachs. With I think with uh, regular birds, they just have one stomach they eat. And it's- I think we can also look to what they eat, right? So what is a primary diet of a hawk and an owl? I assume dead corpses or like some mice, unclean. Uh, mice, filthy mice. And so if we have a filthy mouse that is doing, um, you know, the mice are incredibly disgusting. Is a mice something we would eat? No. Why? Because uh, it's, I mean, clean. just off of what just they're already absolutely disgusting. They eat literally everything. That's not what I'm asking. It doesn't Based have a hoof and it doesn't shoot the Thank you, Eli. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're disgusting. They eat absolutely everything. All right. 
So, and the owl and the nighthawk and the cuck out and the hawk after this kind we don't eat. And the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl. What Fisher do you owl and the great owl. Okay, so more owls. Yeah, all these things are predators of squirrels, mice, little tiny rodents. Owls must have been a pretty good commodity back then. For killing the mice? I mean, he's going over... No, it's, for food, he's going over all these owls here. Like, don't eat all these owls. Don't eat any of these owls. Yeah, I shouldn't eat any any owl whatsoever. All right, and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle. Okay, a pelican. You guys know what a pelican is, right? Yeah. It's the giant beaked ones that, like, hold all the water in their mouth. Right. So, um, and they eat... What do they eat? Fish. Fish. They eat fish. And so, um, something about them. We don't, we don't eat them. We don't know exactly why, but I'm sure anybody who's, like... Uh, in that realm would actually know why they are. All right, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the la lapwing and the bat. Wait, is a bat considered a bird? Uh, well, I don't know, but it's considered something we don't eat. So I don't, I don't know. So I mean, it flies. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's kind bats of a bird. Eat bugs. bugs. Bats eat bugs. Maybe mice. Yeah, yeah. bats. We used to have a resident bat in the house. We couldn't get rid of him for like years. And so we literally had Bruce the bat, and um, he like he flew through the night, and then would like go go under a pitcher during the day, and we just never had the heart to kill Bruce, but because we thought he was like taking out the insects for us. But then one day Bruce never came back. We so don't know where he went. We we don't know if he ate the rat poison or something, and then died in the wall, or if he flew out the door or something. But we tried to get him out the door forever, but Bruce the bat was he was just lived. All right, part of the family. Yeah, he was part of the family, but we don't need him. Okay, all fowls that creep. Going up on all four shall be an abomination to you. All right, what flying fowls? These are flying. Says, NIV says insects. Man, mine says flying insects that creep on wow. all four. So King says fowls, and these other things say flying insects. Fowls, I would think of as birds. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't make any sense because I'm like, what bird crawls on all fours? Oh, yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> like a dragon or something. Yeah, I don't know. There would be no such thing. So the, it Insect. Would, insect is probably the right. Yeah, so all yeah, insects that creep going on all four shall be an abomination to you. All right, so what insects have four legs? Like a cricket? Oh, uh, crickets are clean though. They have six legs. They have six legs? I'm pretty sure. Four oh. legs. What? Flies. 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 They only have four legs? Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's Wait, nasty. Fly, this is flying insects. Think about flying insects. All right, so flying insects. Yeah, so flies. We would not eat the flies. Well, what about, shout out to Chuck, right? He wants us to eat the bugs and be happy. He needs to get have the dietary guides if that guy wants us yeah, to eat man. the bugs. Uh, you got to find the right bugs. The beetles. Oh, beetles, right. Yeah, they we have these them. these giant beetles. They call them dung beetles, I guess, and they, they are huge. They're upper heavy, and then they fly around, and then they hit something and hit the ground. And they, they get stuck on their backs. Well, they're real gross animals because they actually take, like, cow dung, and they'll roll it up and make a house out of it. They'll oh, they do? They'll dung, and they'll eat the dung. Oh, that's why they're called dung that's beetles? That's why they're called dung beetles. They'll, they'll take their back legs, and they'll walk, and they'll run a ball until it's big enough they can go live in. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's really but they're, cool. they're crazy. They're crazy animals because, like, the dung beetles are super fat. They're they can, heavy. They can barely well, they fly. They have rhino beetles here, too, that look just like little rhinos. They do? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys seen it? Ah, yeah. It has a they horn? Yeah. It. yeah, it's like a giant horn. It looks just like a rhino. They also have Hercules it. beetles with giant claws. I haven't seen these, or maybe I don't want to choose to walk. <laughs> look at these. We have we have literally everything here. I mean, there's there's <laughs> we fight against the insects. All right, let's go. Uh, there's also cockroaches, right? They fly sometimes. Cockroaches? They, they, fly. they, they fly. They fly. They have wings. Yeah. yeah. And and nobody wants to eat a cockroach. And they're, they have four legs, right? Yep. So, yeah, ah. don't eat the cockroaches. Nobody wants a cockroach. All right. Don't eat it. Let's roll on. Okay. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goes upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap withal upon the earth. All right. So what are we dealing with here? Uh, uh, and grasshopper? And I've well, jointed legs. Yeah, jointed legs above their look feet. Look down the neck. At 22, it tells you. Okay. Even these of them ye may eat. The locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind. And the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. Okay, my sister, which is cricket, not yeah. the beetle. My sister, beetle. cricket. Okay. And when you say bald locust, my sister, destroying locust. This is, King says beetle. That's, I don't think it can be right, because uh, uh, beetles, beetles are unclean animals. How do we know? Beetles, we have beetles. They don't jump there. from their legs. They don't have the yeah, joints where they, they, they jump legs. like crickets. We're talking like the legs. dung beetle, right? Any beetle, man. So they do have six legs, though. That's yeah. the rhino beetle. Oh, yeah, they have six legs. Uh, Nicole showed us, like, they do look like a rhino. I put in a, well, I put beetles as thumbnails on Yeah. Okay, so this was beetle, though. I'm, I'm kind of confused. So not that I'm going to eat the bugs and be happy, but... Mm, this Mine says cricket, and the cricket okay. has jointed legs just like the rest of them. And hey, grasshopper. Or beetles don't have the jointed legs they jump off of. Okay, so in the, in the NIV it says, Of these you may eat any kind of locust, <laughs> caddy did... 
Uh, Grass, cricket or grasshopper? Destroy. Caddy did is destroying locusts. Like the locusts eat everything. Okay, so we can have the grasshoppers. The locusts. Loc the, I mean, the grasshopper and locusts are close to the same, right? And a cricket. So is a cricket. A cricket doesn't look like a grasshopper. Here, uh, we, need, we need a picture. Nah, a cricket, it's, it's not. Yeah, a cricket looks pretty close to a grasshopper. I don't think so. I, I, I may wrong. be confused. Nicole's got to find this first, but I, I don't believe so. Um, anyway, so th we could eat these, but we the beetle, uh, we got to be careful here because it says, and the beetle after his kind, it says in the king as well. So, um, Nicole is helping us with the handy dandy. That's, that's a cricket. That's a cricket. See, that does not look like a grasshopper at all. Cricket? Looks a lot like a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. It's just black. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. All right. Let's roll into uh, 23. Wait, can we eat the praying mantis then? That would be a... Uh, hey. He's praying? Probably not. We should Don't let him Georgia. pray. Don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what is that? Offer. That's a grasshopper. See, that's not the same. It looks a lot like a cricket to me. No, he, he's bigger. Similar. He has a bigger body and bigger legs. I just don't remember that off the, off the Jiminy Cricket. I just don't remember him looking like a grasshopper. All right. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't watch Disney shows. That's satanic. And so I used to, like twenty years ago. Um, twenty-two is where we're at. Uh, let's see. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Uh, twenty-three. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Which are everything. There's all sorts of flying, creeping things around us. Yes. Um, there's everything. So. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. Ah, oh, man. That's, if you kill a fly on you, I think you're unclean. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be a carcass of an unclean thing. So if you kill a fly, if you actually touch the fly. After it's dead. Hmm? After it's dead. The carcass. After it's dead, right. It has to be after it's dead. So that could be bad, I guess, if you swat a fly off you, then uh, you're unclean until the evening. It's fly swatters. That's why he flies over. Yep. And whosoever bears aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. That's very interesting, right? You smash a little fly on you and you're completely unclean and that's the way it is. So why is that? Uh, I think disease was a pretty big thing back in the day. It's like any like nasty thing on anyone was going to like bring disease into the camp where there's not a lot of... Well, now there's a lot of medicines that cure a lot of things. We have like big pharma and things big like that. Big pharma cure nothing. Well, right. like, like, like back in the day, they like... Like mad disease. Right. That they no, brought I, I, I know what you're saying. I'm just saying big pharma cures nothing. They, they ain't helping us. No. All right. The carcasses, the carcass of every beast which divides the hoof and is not cloven footed nor chews the cud are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be unclean. All right. So which beast does not divide the hoof? It's, we have a. Is a horse? A horse does not divide the hoof? No. They have a, yeah, they have a whole thing. So we don't eat the horse. Pig. Well, pig yeah, has a divided hoof, though. Oh, yeah. Sure. The cut. So, um... What else? Zebra? We probably wouldn't eat the zebra. Yeah, you don't eat the zebras. What if we eat the zebra, though? No. no you have to look at the not, hoof. It's more like a horse, to be honest. No, it's like... It looks it's, like it's a horse. It doesn't divide do the hoof. Do elks chew the cut and have split hoof? Um, elks? Elks? I do believe... I don't elks know. Elks and deer. I know deer is clean. Is it? Deer is clean. How do we know this? They have a split hoof and they chew the cud. How do you know they chew the cud? Maybe look it up at one point. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I'm too old. All right. Um, let's hit on 27. And whatsoever goes upon his paws, among all manner of beasts that go on all four, these are unclean unto you. Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean unto the evening. All right. So if they walk on their paws, what does that mean? Dogs. Dogs. Pitties. Dogs. Can't cats. eat the pitties. Uh, yeah, cats. We can't eat the cats. Cats and dogs. What's that? Paws. Bears. Bears. Bears, Bears have, have paws. Lions. Lions. Tigers. Lions. Tigers. So basically, the feline family and the canine family. Do mice have yeah, paws? Yeah, and again, it goes to why because these things are able to eat everything. Yeah, I mean, dogs are able to eat the most rotten stuff ever, and they, they no problem, right? We fed our stuff dog stuff that we probably should have not fed our dogs, and we they ate them and they were happy. They did just fine. They did just fine. All right, so let's roll. Um. 28. And he that bears the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. They are unclean to you. Okay, so that has the word bears in there, but I'm questioning. So say, for instance, you have a bear skin. You killed the bear skin, right? And you have just the skin of the bear. How long? I mean, it, it says if you bear the carcass of them, is the bear skin the carcass? I don't think so. Well, mine says pick up the carcass, but um, our when bears pick up the carcass. Pick up, he who pick up the carcass has to wash his garments, and they mm -hmm. clean right. Them. But what happens if you have a uh, you have like a bear rug, and uh, 
it's dead or something of the sort? Are we unclean? You know, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know if like there's a cleaning process where we're allowed to have those or not. I have no idea how that would work. Because a lot of that come up to my kid. A lot of that would have to do with the same thing I was I was thinking about. Like if you grab a chunk of meat out of the fridge, just a chunk of rump roast or something, and you have blood on you, how long are are we unclean? Are the cooks unclean until they wash at even? I do, anyone. I, I don't do know. Not know. I don't know the process of like clean out. Well, here it only says unclean. It doesn't say anything that's clean that is a carcass. Unclean. Right, but let's let's take for instance. Let's go back to the bear rug. And so somebody shoots a bear rug. You end up with a bear rug, and I'd say from eBay, but they don't sell them. So um, if you end up with a bear rug, and uh, is it unclean? When does the when does the skin of the bear rug be cleaned? If you walk across the bear rug every day, are you unclean? I don't know because I don't know how the process of that would work. Like. Is a bear is a skin of a bear the carcass? I, After it's been tanned and and I don't know. I don't know. Either. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't think so. I would think like it's all cleaned and everything, but I don't know. When how does that would it work. become clean? It'd be the question. I don't think it does. I don't think it ever becomes clean. So if you have a bear skin rug, uh, is that an abomination to Yah? Maybe. But what about it using it for warmth? I mean, I, I, I mean, a lot of people will use that kind of stuff. And in fact, Indians used to use that all the time. They would, they would kill the bears and they would wear bear skin clothes. Where's, where's it stop being? Where's it stop being? I would probably say maybe a little bit of logic on this would be once you have tanned it and you have made it so it doesn't rot anymore because there's a certain point where this stuff will not rot. It just becomes a rug. Um, the leather and then the hair and there's the rug. So I don't have an answer for that and uh, I guess we don't have an answer either. So um, I don't know. All right, 29. These also shall be unclean among, unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind. Here we go. Uh, I don't know why I want to say tortoise, but uh, I do. Um, so we got no mouse. No weasel. And what is a weasel? You guys know what Mine says a mole. A mole. Yeah, moles are disgusting little mm-hmm. things. So a mole and like a ferret and all of those things you would not eat. Possum. Yeah, possum. Don't eat those nasty little possums. All right. And the tortoise after his kind and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. Okay. And our visa is gecko. Gecko. And we have these like literally running laps on our walls. So we have uh, lizards and uh, chameleons probably all over our walls and... We don't actually take them out. We just they live with us. All stuff. lizards are kind of unclean. Yeah, all clean. So iguanas, the giant six-foot iguanas we have down yeah, here. They're definitely don't unclean. eat those. People love them down here. They fry them up and they eat them. They say it tastes just like chicken. And what do iguanas eat? Mice. I would Bugs? assume little small animals. I don't think so. I think they eat like greens. I really think they eat greens. I, yeah, I think I remember I feed my iguana back in the days. Lettuce, I think, is what his diet was. All right, let's go to 31. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever touches them when they be dead shall be unclean until even. Okay, so you're unclean till even. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, does fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put in water and it must be unclean until the even, so it shall be cleansed. Okay, so that gives us some answers to a lot of this stuff. Um... And uh, whatever, I mean, basically, you guys, you guys see what it says here, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So if this thing, whatever it is, an unclean animal falls down and it touches anything that you have, it, you're, it everything you have, it, yeah, it's, it's over. Okay. And every earthen vessel, whereinto any of them falls, whatsoever it is in it shall be unclean, and ye, sh- and ye shall break it. And we talked about that before. Right, through the clay pots or something like that. Right. And so uh, if, if this is like some wild beast or something. It just falls into your kitchen or something. Something. How? It's a mouse. Or something. You know, or a mouse inside your stuff too, right? A mouse inside of your stuff is, or dead mouse is even worse. Okay. Of all cling meat which may be eaten, that on which such water comes shall be unclean. And all drink that may be drunk in every vessel shall be unclean. Okay, so that's that's it's interesting, right? It pollutes uh, your food. It pollutes, it pollutes your water. Your, yeah, everything. And so they want you to break a, an earthen vessel, vessel, like uh, clay pot. Yeah, clay pot. But like the the brazen ones, the things out of brass, you're you able wash to wash. Off, right. You got to wash. Because it doesn't absorb liquid and like other stuff. Right. All right. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falls shall be unclean. 
whether it be an oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down for they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. So my question is, why are they in your oven? Why are they in your, why are you, if it's unclean animals, why are you cooking this thing up? I was Maybe assuming, it's for the dogs. I would assume they didn't have like a whole lot of uh, like protection, like a normal house. They lived in tents back then, right? So if they were cooking, there's going to be some sort of unclean animals inside of their house and inside of their like. Uh, it just falls their, dead? Seems wild. It falls man. dead inside the oven. You have a possum in your house, and a, 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 like a wolverine or something. It falls. I mean, this maybe is dangerous. Like, maybe like a fly, like just falls into the uh, thing. Falls a, a fly that falls into your soup. You would make your entire soup unclean, as well as the the vessel and everything. All right, interesting. All right. Nevertheless, a fountain or a or pit, wherein there is plenty of water, shall be clean. But that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. Okay, so if uh, something falls, so if an animal, dead, unclean animal falls in your well, then what? Then your well, their whole well is done. Well, what, hold on, what it says, wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. So basically, if it falls in your well, pull it out of your well, and then you're unclean, but I think the well stays clean because the water recycles. You would, you would want to drain that You'd well. You'd want to drain no it, but, doubt, it, but because it refills. Because it says plenty of water. Whether it shall be clean. Yeah, I mean, I think that is correct, but you would want to get that out of your well. Yeah, you want to, like, pump that all out. Yep. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed, which is to be sown, it shall be clean. All right, so if this guy falls into your batch of seeds, you're okay. Yeah, yeah because you're not going to eat it. You're going to plant it, and it, on the ground it's not going to produce something that's unclean. It's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. Good good point. But if any water be put on upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. So if it becomes wet with them on it. Yeah, and that's a huge difference between, yeah, like a dead mouse that becomes in water and stuff. They polluted all your seed. Your seed is jacked. Um, but do you get rid of the seed? Uh, I mean, just... water put upon the seed. So that seed is still unclean. But I, I mean, can you still plant that? Um, You're going to be I, unclean. I yeah, but be unclean. I don't know. Maybe if you plant it, I don't Nicole think. It's says gonna, no. I don't think it's going to be un give you unclean food if you plant it. I mean, it wouldn't. But you're going to be unclean by touching. It. You could also get the disease. Right. I think part of this is that we should not be touching the stuff that could kill us. Is part of the thing, and if you're like touching some festering mouse carcass inside of water, it's gonna probably all sorts of weird bacteria. In it. All right, thirty-nine. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that touches a carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. So this was an any beast. Now this isn't just the unclean beast. This is any beast. Yeah. So did I say something else? No, no, no. I'm just ma I'm just making note of this because before it's like if you touch an unclean beast carcass, and now they're specifying that if you touch any beast carcass, you're unclean. NIV says uh, that you're allowed to eat. Okay. If any animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches his carcass will be unclean until even. Okay. Well, if it dies of itself, you shouldn't eat it. We shouldn't be. It shouldn't. It's not. Yeah, so basically even when you just like to take it to bury it or whatever, you're unclean. Yeah, absolutely. All right, 40. And he that eats of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. He also that bears the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even. Okay, so yeah, something about touching the dead. And every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. What does that mean? Every creeping thing. What does that mean? A creeping thing. I think it's uh, like a like slug and a worm. Maybe a snake. snake. Yeah, I think it's a snake. Uh, yeah, no legs. Creep, no creeps nothing. Along. Uh, I think iguanas creep on their stomachs, don't they? Because they're like usually. No, short. they have like little short legs. They're, yeah, but I'm pretty sure like so short. Yeah, legs. they drag their stomach, but I they think they have legs. They drag their tail. I know they like their back. Yeah, for sure. Like, they drag their tails. I don't eat snakes. Yeah, don't eat the snakes. And I've seen lots, lots of cowboys just always eat the snakes. They kill the snake and, and skin it and then cook it up. Yeah, it's like super easy to skin this thing. I've heard personally. All right, whatsoever goes upon the belly and whatsoever goes upon all four or whatsoever has more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for no. they are an abomination. No centipedes. No centipedes, millipedes, those things with a gazillion legs. I mean, who wants to eat those? Caterpillars, animals? you shouldn't eat the caterpillars. You might die from eating a caterpillar. Yeah, that, would hurt. that would really hurt, like especially the furry ones. Yeah, the furry ones down here will kill you. All right, ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps, Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. Yeah, don't touch snakes or anything like that. I'm sure there's a lot of examples of creeping things. I don't have any, though. Anyone else? No? Anything uh, else creeping? Spiders? Do they count? I don't know. Don't eat the spiders. Snails creeps. Snails. Snails and slugs, yeah. Yeah. All right. For I am Yahuwah Elohekim. Ye, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. 
for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So it's not only just nasty, we shouldn't touch it because we're unclean. For I am Yahuwah that brings you up out of the land of Mitzram to be your Elohim. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the Torah of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moves in the waters and of every creature that creeps upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the cling and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So after all of this, after we finished 47 verses of rules and regulations of what should be eaten, how to determine what is clean, uh, do you really want to go back to eating what is unclean? What makes Yahuwah angry? He says, you, will not, you don't want to defile yourself. You do not want to be unclean in the eyes of Yahuwah. Is that what you really want to do, is defile yourself in the face of your Creator? There's three billion Christians that picked up a piece of bacon today and said, yeah, absolutely. They don't care. I mean, yes. I, that's all I can say. I have no idea what goes through the minds of, of people like that. But if you are truly seeking our Creator with all your heart, mind, and soul, which is what Deuteronomy 6 is about, it's the Shema, right? It's like, hear, O Israel, our, our Elohim is, 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 is one. And um, we need to present ourselves in such a fashion that we are cling. And um, it means, it may not mean something to us, but it absolutely means something to Yah, and that is why it must mean everything to us. We can't get outside of the ways of our Creator and what He has. And when we look at this stuff, if you want to say scientifically or whatever, this is the stuff that will kill us. It's the stuff that many, many people end up in hospitals for, many, many people, um, and they, they never stop. You know, the Americans, North Americans for sure. I, I don't know about anyone else. I don't have any, uh, anything else. And I guess down here, all, all South America, they love their pig. Pigs are everywhere. It's a cheap meat. Pigs have a ton of little babies. They grow up big, fat things, and um, they, they enjoy eating them. And it is, it is very unfortunate that we have... Uh, that we are in such a society as this, but we are in a heathen, pagan society, and most of us have awakened, and we are in slavery, right? We are in slavery because we're in either North America, or we're in some place, we're in bondage, and we have, you know, oppressors all around us, and they're, they're trying to do evil stuff to us. So this is why we must have the Torah, and is why this Torah is, we need to write it on our hearts, minds, and souls, so that we do not fall, we do not fall out of grace with our Creator, and um, Eli... Yep. Salvation begins where? At the cross. What does that mean? Mistake. What does that mean? Because Yeshua, he died for our sins, so we will have salvation if we believe in him and ask for pens. Okay, he died for our sins. That means I can eat whatever pork I want. He's, he died for my sins. I can, I can continue on. You may have died for your sins. That doesn't mean that you should keep sinning. Why? Because it's against the Torah. Well, I mean, if he died for my sins, guys, anyone else here? I'm, I'm giving you a he, Christian he, argument. He died, he died for your sins. But he also died so that you don't have to sacrifice, so that there's a way into the Shamaim. And he didn't die to get rid of the Torah. He died to fulfill it and do what was prophesied in the Torah, saying, I am going to send my son, I'm going to send my son in my name to save you all from your iniquities. And that is what he did. He saved us to, oof, so that we can have forgiveness, so that we can be forgiven through the blood of Yeshua because he says he does not want sacrifices. He wants obedience. He wants people that will obey him. He wants people to actually listen to what he says. He does not want these sacrifices anymore because they mean nothing to him when people continue on sinning. Yeah, no, the, the smell and the fragrance and the aroma is only going to mean so much when these people are living in sin and they're unwilling to abide by it. And I guess that's the bottom line. Are you willing to submit yourself to our higher power because by default, even if you do not get on your knees to Yah and you do not keep his Torah, by default, you're serving Hasatan, right? You cannot, you cannot live just partiality. You cannot live lukewarm. You cannot live um, half in and half out, right? There's no such thing as half in and half out. It's either all the way in or all the way out. And it's, uh, go ahead, kid. Uh, there's a saying that's like if a person becomes a servant of a perfect master, they have freed themselves more than the rest of the world. And if you were to become Yah, like a servant of Yah, you have chosen the best master in the entire world. You've chosen the best person to ever fall under because he will reign blessings. He will reign more than you, you will be enslaved in the world instead of you sitting there being stuck in sin, being stuck in a world of darkness. He will show you light and blessings and love that you have never seen before if you would just submit yourself to him. Yeah, absolutely. And there's that's that's where we can also say... There is no fear of this world in our Elohim Most High. And every once in a while, I will look and I will decide that, man, this world is really falling. I, I watch some news articles, not on the mainstream media, but I'll, some alternative medias. And I will say that, man, we should all be very fearful of what is coming. And then 
I'm like, wow, you know, I shouldn't be living like this. I, sh I, I, I said, you know what? Our power comes from Yah. Nothing is going to happen without his way. My breath, all of our breaths, everything that we do, our lives are 150,000% controlled by Yah. He will determine when my ticker stops. He will determine when all of our tickers stop. And the great evil may come up on us, but we always have our creator and it may just be a test. Are you, are you fulfilling your test? Are we making it through or are we taking our eyes off the ball? And when we take our eyes off Yah, the devil will sneak in. He will take over us. He will, he will have us living in fear. We will be scared of the future. Even though we know the future is very dark, it's not very dark for those who keep Yah's laws because these, these bodies of ours, we're, we're going to go from dust we came to dust we will go. We will not, we, most of us will probably not survive this. According to the book of Revelations, we are probably not going to survive this, but that is not the end. It's the very beginning, right? And as long as these, you know, whatever years you have on this world are, or whatever time means to you, time means absolutely nothing to our creator, where one day for him is a thousand years. This is just a, a mere tiny bit of time, which seems like everything to us. But to our creator, it's just, you know, it's just another bit of time. And so when we are done with this world, when this world is done with us, then we will be in a very powerful place. We'll be in a powerful, we'll be in protection. We'll be in the, the grip of our creator. Hopefully we have the, our Messiah, Yahushua, who is our king. Hopefully he is, you know, this is, he's not coming back and he's not going to, you know, the whips and flipping the tables was the beginning when he comes back the next time, it's not going to be lovey-dovey. It's not going to be hanging tight. He's going to come back for war. And he will bring what his dad has, which his dad is a man of war. And um, so we need to be in all of this. All right, everybody. That's it. I've rambled a lot. You guys, Shabbat Shalom to everybody out there. Um, much love to our, our family. Thank you guys for listening. Anything else, Jeff? Uh, get recharged. There's a week ahead of you, and today is the perfect day to yes. sit and rest. And, yes, uh, recharge. Get, get, get your life, uh, get some peace in your life. Yes, get some peace in your life. Use this Sabbath day of rest. Our creator loves us so much that not only did he say six days is the only time that we should work, but that seventh day, we need to chill out. We need to relax. We need to depend upon him for everything. And it's a day that we just need to spend it with him. And you will be recharged. Your life will be better. Everything will be. All right, gentlemen. All right. All right. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom.